Now available in paperback and Kindle Unlimited, E-Steam, The Sands of Time. It's action and adventure in ancient Egypt in this terrific teen time travel romance. Get your copy of E-Steam, The Sands of Time at your favorite online bookseller today. I said I was through with Black Lightning after the absolutely horrific first season, which was nothing more than preaching, identity politics, and a far-left narrative as related to the black image and related to the presentation of black men. However, I had to do some work for a family member on my computer, and I didn't have time to change the channel. And as I watched the second episode of the second season of Black Lightning, I saw that Greg Berlanti continues to project his issues that he has against black men in his television series. And what he presented in the second episode of Black Lightning absolutely disgusted me because he's laying the foundation in the second season of Black Lightning for the complete degradation and complete emasculation of a black man. Now, we saw hints of that in season one of Black Lightning, where they had one episode where Jefferson Pierce was taken to jail. And in that episode where Jefferson Pierce was taken to jail, they had your Jefferson Pierce strip search, they had him squat and cough, they put him in a prison uniform, and again, this was all done not for the way of creating, crafting a great story, this was all about creating images that satisfied white supremacists and satisfied white liberals towards the image of black men they wanted to see. They wanted to see not Jefferson Pierce as a hero, but they wanted to show a black man being degraded because this is what many of these white supremacists, liberals, and racist fanboys enjoy watching the complete degradation of a black man, and that even though he's a hero, he's still going to be placed in the role of an N-word. That's what that episode of Black Lightning was all about. In spite of all the far-left preachiness, it just was the same old racism. And in this second season episode, that was the second episode, we saw that narrative escalated by your Greg Berlanti. Now, in the second season episode, your Jefferson Pierce wound up being fired as the principal of the high school he worked at. And this was, again, an effort to degrade the black man by taking away his job. Because if you take the black man's job away, no one can see him as a leader, no one can see him as an authority figure, and no one sees him as someone they need to respect. So what they want to do is strip the black man's manhood away, strip the black man's masculinity away, and show that the black man's masculinity has lower value on a show about a black hero. And this was done by having Jefferson Pierce's replacement come in. And the guy they brought in to replace the supposedly stronger and more masculine-appearing Jefferson Pierce is this beta white male. And I know what Greg Berlanti was trying to say with that image of that beta white male as related to white supremacy. With this beta white male, what your Greg Berlanti is trying to do is say that this beta white male has more power than a masculine black man who was a leader and authority figure, more power than a black man, and more authority than a black man. So what he was doing in that episode was slapping black men in the face with this beta white male in saying that this beta male is superior to a black male. And that's, again, an insult to the black audience on a show which features a black hero. And the reason why I'm calling this out is because, again, it's clear to me that your Greg Berlanti, the producer of the CW superhero shows like Arrow 
The Flash, Supergirl, Legends of Tomorrow, and Black Lightning clearly has an issue with black men. And I can see that issue clearly based on the pattern related to every black male character he portrays on all of his CW superhero shows, the CW's Riverdale, and the CW's brand new show, All American. There's clearly a pattern related to the way he portrays black men, and I saw that with John Diggle, the butler early in Arrow, the bumbling, stumbling Mr. Terrific, and I also saw it with the um, Riverdale portrayal of Chuck Clayton, where he literally portrayed Chuck Clayton, the nicest guy in all of Archie comics, into this black brute who was going out here lying and saying he was having sex with white women, and clearly, again, an episode meant to degrade the black male image. And I also saw it one Saturday night when I watched two episodes of his new show, All American, which is supposed to be about a black boy who is supposed to be going to try to elevate himself through football. But as I watched that show, I just saw so much racism and so much degradation of, of black men in that show, where they came in here talking about single mothers, talking about how he's a victim, and the whole victim narrative of the ghetto. It, again, it just was reeked of so much paternalism, it just wasn't funny. It was meant to be, on the surface, passively, a supposedly positive black show about a black coach mentoring a black boy from the streets, but it was all the same far-left white liberal narrative being pushed at black people that black people need a savior and that this savior has to be the one that cleans up this savage from the streets. I literally was insulted watching that all those two episodes of All American. And again, I clearly saw, when I saw Greg Berlanti as the executive producer, I saw Greg Berlanti's issues regarding black men. But when I looked at this Black Lightning, I know what's coming for season two. And I know in season two, it's going to be all about the degradation and complete emasculation of a black man on Black Lightning. It will not be about a hero teaching his daughters how to serve their community as they learn how to use their powers. No, we're not going to get that story from Greg Berlanti. It's all going to be about him finding new and exciting ways to emasculate a black man while promoting his paternalistic identity politics to the audience and talking down to the audience regarding black people and the black image. And this, again, is another reason why I believe we need to have black-owned black media. Because when we have black-owned black media controlled by black men, we don't get images of black men where black men are being emasculated. No, when we have people like Chio Odari Coker running shows like Luke Cage, we get a completely different picture of the black image. Because on Luke Cage in season two, we got an image of a strong masculine black man. We got an image of a black man who was a leader and an authority figure. And we started to see in his character transformation arc, this man going to take control over his community and making efforts to protect his community from the predatory black people and those white people. And we're not going to get that story on Black Lightning with your, excuse me, Greg Berlanti, because your Greg Berlanti, again, believes that he's being tolerant, but in his tolerance, he passive-aggressively degrades black men in his shows, and Black Lightning looks like in season two, excuse me, is going to be another one of these shows that degrades the black man and degrades the black male image by finding some way to make it where the black man appears to be 
and capable of doing anything himself. And again, when I look at the cancellation of Luke Cage, when I look at what ha was happening at Black Lightning, again, I clearly see a desperate need for black-owned black media like the SJS Direct imprint. Because it's only on black-owned black media that we're going to get positive portrayals of black men like John Haynes, which I feature in The Temptation of John Haynes, The Man Who Rules the World, A Conversation with Death, and other books like Escape from Transylvania, Bride of Dracula, Night of the Vampires, and East in the Sands of Time. That's the only place where you're going to get strong, masculine, heterosexual, intelligent black men who are shown to be leaders, shown to be authority figures, and shown to be competent and capable men. Now, I know a lot of people want to support Black Lightning because they want to see that image of a black man as a father and someone who wants to protect his community, but you cannot get those type of images from mainstream media because mainstream media is filled with people like Greg Berlanti who clearly have issues with black men, and it's those issues they have with black men that prevent them from creating and crafting well-crafted stories that feature black men. Either they try to find ways to effeminize black men, neuter black men, or emasculate black men, or they try to homosexualize black men. And that's my real issue with guys like Greg Berlanti, because again, I look at the pattern on his shows, and he never makes an effort to give us a positive and balanced portrayal of a black man, and every effort that he puts in his shows, he finds a way to degrade black men. And it looks like if he takes this show down the course, what's going to happen to Black Lightning is what happens to all Berlanti shows, is this Berlanti curse. We're around season 2.5, around the halfway point of the second season. The show will fall completely apart because he will be so busy pushing his identity politics and his narrative that the show will fall completely apart. And that's going to really drive Black Lightning, which was already a weak show, further down because the show started off on an identity politics platform. And it's just going to get worse as the season goes along. But when I saw your Jefferson Pierce being fired from his job, and I saw that beta white male being re his replacement, again, I saw Greg Berlanti's agenda right there. And part of his agenda in every one of his shows is to take a passive-aggressive swipe at black men and find ways to degrade black men. Again, whether it be John Diggle, the butler, getting his N-word moment in Arrow Season 6 after years of faithful service in asking for the Green Arrow costume, which I always thought was the greatest insult because Diggle was a better tactician and far more skilled other ways than your Green Arrow, but he's going to ask for the role of the Green Arrow like a buck-dancing butler and then being told that the Green Arrow makes Oliver Queen the best man he can be, which is a slap in the face to the character or your Mr. Terrific, who was heterosexual in the comics, but made homosexual in the Arrow show. That's another insult. Then you have James Olsen, the guardian of the friend zone, originally meant to be the love interest of Kara the Supergirl, but then put into the beta male friend zone and completely emasculated. And then you have Chuck Clayton, the savage black brute. And then you have on the Flash... Kid Flash, who has been turned into an asexual being. So I look at Greg Berlanti's shows, and again, just see a serious issue he has with black men. And I look at Black Lightning, and again, that just sparks the anger in me, because it looks like to me, again, these superhero shows that they're putting on the CW, all I see is nothing but racism in all of them. If you'd like to try some of my positive stories, featuring John Haynes, a strong, masculine, African-American hero. 
you can pick up The Temptation of John Haynes, The Man Who Rules the World, John Haynes, A Conversation with Death, Isis, Bride of Dracula, Isis, Night of the Vampires, and Isis, Escape from Transylvania, and East in the Sands of Time, all stories that feature John Haynes on Amazon.com by clicking the link in the description box. And if you want to help me make more videos like this, you can donate to my Patreon by clicking the link in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe.